Okay, so your workflow will be to set up your environment and all you really need to do is make sure you've got your project uh, your project folder I already copied from the network folder 627 and I renamed it 629 so most of you seem to be doing that that's good if you're using the same project over and over that's fine but then the issue of course is if you uh, need to revert back to earlier code and you don't have that backed up somewhere uh, you'll, you'll be stuck so I like to make a copy of the folder that way. It's, it's a backup, just in case I need to revert to a point before I made the changes. So I'm going to uh, open the index HTML and the uh, index.js files in Notepad. Got the index file of JS and HTML both open. You guys can uh, take that with you actually. This is being blocked. So. Um, I've got both the HTML and the JS. To remind ourselves where we're at, I'm going to run that in Chrome and we were setting up this login logout system. We're still going to do a little bit more with it. And then deal a little bit with the with the, the design of things. So I'll open this in uh, Chrome just to remind myself what it looks like. So uh, I'm going to create an account just so that it completely works very simply. The AA account, AA password. Just creating something so that I can log in. Okay, home screen. So uh, the app is um, has a system to log in, to log out. It doesn't have a system to remember you. It doesn't remember that you've logged in and I don't want to have to log in every time the app loads especially when I get it into my my uh, real device I want it to be able to remember me every time I open the app on the device it'll remember me so let's set up the code to do that I'm just gonna be uh, looking at the local storage it's gonna check did a person ever log in we have to have a way to save that information. Did a person ever log in? Are they logged in? If they are logged in, okay, take them directly to the home screen. If they've never logged in, take them to the welcome screen. So that's what we'll be working on right now. I'm going to open up the index.js file. I'm going to do this via JavaScript. All right, so in the JavaScript, let's go ahead and find our login function. When we log in, that's where it needs to be set. A person has logged in. You need to remember this. So our login function, if you scroll around, mine starts on line 57. So log, <coughs> here's the login function. We've got the part uh, here, check if the attempted login does not exist. All right, so here's the first part. Is there a user with that name, yes or no? Okay, uh, if 
if there is no user, uh, tell them that account doesn't exist. Or else there is a user, so we go to the next part. Then there's another if else. Okay, do the passwords match that you're trying to log in with? Yes or no? Else in this case is the no part, no, your passwords don't match. So in this part, between lines 75 and 78 is where, uh, where, where it recognizes the person's email and the person's password. So this first chunk, let me zoom in, if between 75 and 78 is where we need to deal with it. We need to add a little bit extra here to keep track. Uh, what do we have so far? Console log to give ourselves some feedback. We move over to the other page and we also write the email on the bottom of the footer. We never noted that. Might as well make a note. So line 79 or 80, that's where the person's email is written to the bottom of the footer. The person, write the user's email. at the footer of a screen, H4. Remember, we've got an H4 with a class. And that class, we, we change all instances of that class. All instances of the class that we defined elsewhere, we set to the person's email. OK, this is where I also want to make a system to keep track that the person has logged in. And we're going to use local storage again. We can create as many of these local storage objects as we want. We've got one local storage object which keeps track of um, the person's um, email uh, if the account exists. Then we've got uh, another local storage object for uh, checking if the person has logged in. So we'll write local storage, capital S, remember capital S, dot set item, capital I. Set item works by specifying a key and then a value. So we're going to create a, a new a new little piece of data that we're that we're storing. This will be in quotes. Is logged in. We never used quotes before because we were using a variable. Uh, over here, for example, local storage get item etc. No quotes. Well, that's because there was a variable in play. We've used the variable over and over, either to get an item or set an item. For us, we don't need to get fancy and create a variable, although it's very common to create a variable called is logged in, set it to true, set it to false. Uh, that's how we're able to check. Is a person logged in? A simple variable that is either true or false, basically. If a person has gone this far to log in, basically we set that to true. If they've logged out, then it's set to false, basically. The way we're doing this, however, is we also need to keep track of, okay, who is logged in? Not just that they're logged in, who is logged in? And we can have 50 email accounts, 50 email addresses as the, as the login. So we can't simply say this as true or false. We're going to tie this to the person's current email. If that email exists, they are logged in. If it doesn't exist, they're not logged in. So we're saying set item with their current email, which is tempval in email login, capital I. Uh, we're checking here, get an item if the item doesn't exist, OK? Account doesn't exist must exist. So now we'll check what's the password they're trying to log into based on the account saved password. If that's true, then okay, we're logged in. We'll say their name on the H4. And we'll store in an is logged in cookie 
the name of who is currently logged in. So note here, uh, store the email of who last logged in in local storage. This is our mechanism for it to keep track. Is the person logged in? We will set. Rather than true or false, this is sort of the same, but we need to keep track of who was the person logged in, so we're going to store an email. If an email exists, the person must have been logged in, and we have a way to retrieve who was it that was logged in via the email. What was the second parameter? So when the first one it checks to see if it's logged in, and the second one is logged in? No, it's the whole thing. Oh, yeah. You need set item to store an item. Correct. So uh, this is what the cookie is called, is yeah. logged in. And it's going to store the value of the person's email. And then after the check, exactly. This is just setting up the mechanism to be able to check. Then we will set up the mechanism to check. So store the email of who last logged in in local storage. So we can retrieve if they've logged in in another part. Okay, the opposite is if they log out, don't store that email anymore. When they log in, store the email of who logged in. When they log out, clear that out. So that then we can have an if-else statement to check, is anyone logged in? So let's go find our log out function. This line has let us set who has logged in. Let's find the log out function, which is a very simple one so far. Right here, it's by 93 or so. This time we'll say local storage dot set item using the is logged in item, comma quotes, empty quotes. No space or anything, empty quotes. So line uh, 83 stores who has logged in. Line 96 clears it out. <coughs> That's the logic there. You use the log in function to let the person log in and store that info. Log out function moves them back to the welcome screen, but more importantly, clears out that variable, that cookie that is keeping track of who has logged in. So note there, we set the local storage of who has logged in, who has last logged in, to null, or empty. No spaces in this quote. Technically, a space is not empty. A space is ASCII character 32. So these empty spaces are technically a value. We don't see it, it's invisible, but there is a value every time there's an empty space. So make sure there's no empty space in those quotes, or else when we try to do our if-else, there's actually something being stored. It's an empty character, which does take up space, one, one bit. All right, so uh, we keep track of who logged in, then we log them out. So this means, this is sort of a catch-22. I know how the code is going to look, but I can't quite show you how it looks You know, on day one. We have to go this far for the logic of it, because now we need to back up to like line one to check, is the person logged in? I wouldn't show you that code yet, because we never set up how to log in, how to log out, how to create an account. So let's back up to the beginning of the code. 
let's see, use strict console log ready to rock. Uh, we will say, we'll put it um, before sign up. Code to check if a person, if a user has logged in previously. This will be an if else statement. So uh, we'll have an if else, a way to check. The main function starts, simple little ready to rock message. Here's the first thing that needs to happen. Now that we have a way to create accounts, now that we have a way to log in, now that we have a way to log out, now that we have a way to keep track of that, the first thing that needs to be checked in a complete project is, is anyone logged in or logged out? We're going to check if the, we're going to check if no user has logged in first then else will be a user is logged in. So we'll, we'll set the if condition in a moment, but let me f let's first check, set our console log. There's going to be the possibility of, no, they're not logged in. Yes, they are logged in. So just some uh, console output there. not logged in. It's useful to also check for troubleshooting this what was stored in that um, in that cookie so to speak in that local storage object. Let's get let's get what is stored there just in case I thought it was working especially as I'm troubleshooting it so it's useful to say we triggered the not logged in, what is in that local storage object it, that I'm expecting it to be. So what is stored in that is logged in cookie, in the local storage object. Basically we need the same thing for the is logged in, but we will just change it. I'll just copy it. Because we're going we're gonna to check again what was stored there, but this time it's going to say, yes, is logged in. So this chunk will deal with no one is logged in. This chunk will deal, yes, someone is logged in. And the way this will be, this, the way this uh, will be able to make the decision is for us to check what has been stored in is logged in. So we'll have local storage dot get item. We're going to get the is logged in object. We need to get what is stored and check that if it is equal to, triple equal to, undefined, there's a possibility that what was stored, depending when it's stored, what could be in there is undefined, what could be in there is null, what could be there is is empty. So we need to check for three things at once. If is, if is logged in is undefined, a person is never logged in. So it should trigger they're not logged in. They've never created an account. There's a possibility, so we'll have to have an or. Okay, what if or local storage is logged in is set to null? 
there's a possibility of that being set to null in various ways. If what's been stored in, in there is null, then again, they have not logged in. Or there's a possibility that maybe the local storage is empty. That happens sometimes too. So if it's empty, again, they've not logged in. The way we check for or is we use the vertical pipe character twice. This is shift backslash. On your keyboard above your enter, you have backslash. Shift backslash is a vertical pipe character. We need two of them, no space. That means or. If this happens, or this happens, or this happens, all of that relates to they never logged in. So let's copy getting the object and checking if it's null. So copy that local storage dot get item still inside of the parentheses, but after or paste. And this time we're checking null. Now I'm checking two things. Is local storage undefined or is it null? In either of those cases, we have not logged in. One more, so space, pipes, one more or. Same thing, retrieve it, and we'll check this time for empty. Paste that, space, quote, quote, nothing between the quotes. <clears throat> this is just to cover our bets, because as I've uh, done beta testing of this system uh, over the different semesters, we, we seem to uncover different possibilities. As I say, it's hard to write foolproof code because there are so many ingenious fools. So there's always an instance where we thought we covered everything, and as we beta test it, whoops, there's another thing. So it seems that throughout the semesters, checking for undefined, checking for no, and checking for empty seems to cover the basics. To test this, you can save it and run it. Let me show you how it should work. If I run this, without doing anything, I ran it fresh. Instead of refreshing it, I ran it fresh. That often gives you more true results. Refreshing is convenient, but rerunning it again seems to give you better, accurate results. I haven't clicked on anything. I've just simply run it. The index file it is not logged in. What is currently stored in that local storage is null. You might not have expected that. You might have thought of it being undefined. Or wait a minute, didn't we do set item? We have set item, which in theory is supposed to set the person's email. If they've logged in, if they've created an account to log in. When you created that account a moment ago, that was before the current code. So there has not been a chance to trigger the is logged in code. So this code that we added here to set the item didn't exist a little while ago. So we're getting, you never logged in. We have to pass through login at least once for it to start to track this. So I'm going to create another account, bb. Um, then I'm going to log in. And then now, just to fully test it, I'll close the browser completely and run it again. Console output, yes, is logged in. Now that it's had a chance to go through the whole sequence of 
saving the is logged in cookie, now it sees it. It's not doing it completely yet, of course, but there's the code so far. This, uh, this, this first if else. This is going to set up our system. So let's pause there. Did someone? Did you get those results? Have you been able to get the is logged in? Yeah, let me see here. The end is the same as before, but it's just double equals empty quotes. Or you can copy and paste the previous and just change it to equals empty. Yes. Let me open it side by side. So on the left side is the end of the previous code, and then on the right side, set item. Let's see, set item. All right, so testing this um, at the least should uh, be triggering that yes, someone has logged in. In my last case, BBB. Um, to test it a little bit more, uh, I'm going to log in this time with AAA. Uh, I've logged in with the A account. If I close it and run it again, the console should say, I've logged in last with AAA. Uh, it doesn't take me where I want yet, but again, as, as testing it. This time I'll, I'll just create a, a real, completely real item here. So if I were to create a completely real account, stored and sign in with that account <clears throat> okay so here it confirms I've logged in with a brand new account a moment ago I was logged in with the AAA account if I close it and run it I'm just reiterating that the system works. So the last time I logged in was with the Campos. Um, so the system of checking works. All right, so this simply checks possibilities. This if checks three things at once. If it's undefined or it's null or it's empty. 
logically the person is not logged in because set item was never triggered. They never logged in. Else, the opposite of it not happening is that it did happen. We have two possibilities always with this, yes or no, true or false. So else in this case is it did happen. They did log in at some point. So then we've got here, yes, they logged in. And what was last stored here was whatever last email they logged in with. Okay, so the way we want this to work is nothing really meaningful has to happen to the, for the user on line 15. For the user, we don't need to show them anything. They don't know what they're missing. So for the console output for us, that's, that's fine. For the developer, we're telling ourselves something. No one has ever logged in. For the user, we're not going to do anything inside of if. They don't need to know. Else, definitely, they need to know. Else, what they need to know is that they go directly to the welcome screen. No more logging in. We know that we have the ability to check if they've logged in, so just send them to the welcome screen. Not the welcome, the home screen, ready to use the app. So here we will use what we've done before the jQuery mobile object for this current page. So we're going to use the same code we used on the other screen when we when we did our login. Remember it asked for username and password. If the username and passwords match, if else, if they match, then they, it took us to the welcome screen. I mean the home screen home screen. We need to do something very similar with a little bit of differences because of the nuance of the page that we're in. So this, this again means the, the current page dot change oh sorry uh, not change yet page container again upon the current mobile page container. We'll use the page container method. Inside parentheses, inside quotes, change. <clears throat> On the current screen, let's change somewhere. It has a variety of built-in things that it can do, mm -hmm. and one of the things that we want at the moment is to change from one screen to another. The rest of the things that it does, I don't have them memorized, I have to look them up. The page container lets you do different things upon the current page. One of them is, let's change to another page. The other page is going to be in the second parameter here in quotes, pound pg home. Current page, let's change to PG Home. And this is happening in else, which we've confirmed that is checking that you have logged in. We need a few more options here for this to fully work. We previously had options of transition. Move us from this page to that page with a certain animation. But here we need two options, very important, uh, to change us from the different screens because of the nature of the screens the nature of what this code is saying. So in curly braces, we'll have the transition, the animation, like we've done before. Flip. Or else the default will be a fade. We're going to make it flip again. As soon as the app loads up, flip into the home screen. Why are they curly braces and not curly It's just the way jQuery Mobile works. You have to write it this way. But it's in a format known as JSON. J-S-O-N. It's in JSON format, which you will get more experience with uh, in part two of the class. So the syntax is curly braces, some key, colon, some value. Adding another set of parameters, so comma, space, another quotes. This one is allow, same, capital S, page, capital P, transition, capital T, colon, 
true. Doesn't need quotes there because actually yes, quotes. It's JSON format. Okay, so here's another option. In the jQuery mobile specification, if you go off and read the deep documents, there is uh, this particular option, allow same page transition. Um, default is false, so we have to set it to true. We have to override it. Basically, we're trying to say, allow us from the current page to be able to transition to another page. So from this same page, let us transition, let us move to another page. True. So from the welcome screen, basically, let us move to the PG home. Comma, one more. Reload. Colon, quotes, true. On that one, the default is false. The way jQuery Mobile works is if you're looking at the home, if you're looking at the welcome section and you click a button to go to the home section, it has a built-in way to move you from one to the other. It's all in one document, but there's an animation that happens that moves from welcome to home when the person clicks. This is not based on a click. This is based on it checking if else. Therefore, we need to do a little bit extra. Reload the page. Take us out of welcome and move us to home. So we have to have these two extra parameters here to fully let us move automatically from the home from the welcome to the home. Let's note that. Move user from PG welcome to PG home, various options. All those options at the end of the line, it's that's just the way it is. Can't show everything at once, but those options are allow same trans transition and reload true. When we had the uh, login function, it uh, wrote the person's email on the footer. Via the login, it triggered the put the person's email in the footer. Uh, we don't have that unless we pass through the login function, or we also add it to this if else. We're going to add the same thing uh, to write the person's email at the bottom. We have l user email object dot html. Let's write some html wherever the class of user email is is present in the app. We're writing the person's email, so. Local storage, get item, be careful here about the parentheses, parentheses for HTML method, parentheses for get item. Make sure you've got two parentheses closing here, one for get item, one for HTML. We're getting is logged in is logged in stores the email of the last person signed in which is in all capitalization because of other things we did throughout the project so we will then also add two lowercase if you don't put that that's fine the 
email will appear in all uppercase because it was stored in local storage as uppercase and that's fine if it's all uppercase I just want it lowercase I like how it looks and that has an opening in close parentheses so make sure you've got two parentheses here because this one is for lowercase and this one is for HTML also write the person the user's email to the footer to the footers because we never we didn't last use login Previously, the person's email was written for us because we went through login. We're not going to go through login anymore. It's going to directly go from welcome to home. So we need to write the person's email down there. Go ahead and save it and run it, and let's test it to see if it's working how we expect. If I open up my console, I get the feedback. Oh. Can I read property of HTML undefined? Uh, did I misspell that? Did anyone else get that as well? Yes. All right, let's see what's going on there. Most likely our L, our element, oh, I know why. We are, tr okay, because of the order of things. Here's what's happening. We're trying to use HTML upon the object L user email. Technically, that doesn't exist by line 21. L user email exists when we first set it up down on uh, line uh, 122. So there's 100 lines later. The order of these things matters. We had created these objects on line out 122 in the order, in the right order here. But now we're trying to use L user email. We're trying to use it on line 22 before it exists on line 122. So this is an example where let's move that up higher. That should fix it. But before we move it, let's go to down to your line 122. Finish that statement. Draw an L user email, user email, semicolon. Finish that statement. No more comma. But then we need var at the beginning of button logout because we're going to cut and paste that early on. We're going to move it closer to the top. Then that object will exist. <coughs> then if else, then write that HTML. So previously the issue was we were trying to write HTML onto an object <coughs> that didn't exist yet. I'm going to cut that. So we can move it to the top. Let's just say we'll write it right after, just right before. It doesn't really matter as long as it's before the if the if else. So now when, when the code runs again, it'll get to line 13. It'll create that object. Our if else stuff will work. Then it'll say, okay, let's use this object that now exists. And let's write HTML into it. So my console says, yes, is logged in. And here's where I have to tell you, break your hearts. It's not actually going to move us directly to the home screen like I've been promising until, for some reason, we get it into the app next week. So this works. You know, I tested it through various semesters and before the first day of class. It works. But as I was testing it, 
out in the regular web browser, it didn't seem to do it. But when it's in the app, it will work. I can show it to you right here. I can load it up on my phone and show it. It works. Trust me. But it's not gonna it's not gonna actually jump us from welcome to home as we're testing it right now, but it will. Because we are seeing, we should be seeing that it does detect, yes, it works. It's just that for some reason in all the testing that I did and I couldn't quite find an answer online, it's not actually jumping us to the home screen right now <coughs> when it's not in the app. But it will work. So if it worked up to this far where it is detecting that, that's all we can do for the moment. Um, we're going to take our first break to confirm that this code works. Then we're going to continue with the code and then we'll go on. So it's 6.55. We'll take a break until 7.05 and go on.